Oli the Goalie Tech Reviews here. Today is a really big day at the Oli household. Why you might ask? Well, today Purolator has dropped off my Elite Screens Aeon Sin White A 8K screen. This is an acoustically transparent screen to replace my existing DIY screen that I had built my own a couple of years ago. Uh, very happy with that screen, it worked out well, but I wanted something bigger, but the problem was, and I'll show you in a second, I have wall mounted speakers and any screen over the 130 inch that I was currently using was going to be too big. I took a, a little digging around, I discovered uh, or found this screen on uh, the Elite's uh, website and reached out to them and they agreed to a collaborative video and here we are today. So I'm really looking forward to getting this thing out of the box, building it, if I have enough room in this home theater, and getting it up on the wall. Uh, we'll do some comparisons of the sound with my existing screen to the new acoustically transparent screen that's actually covering up the speakers, and we'll go from there. But first we're going to take it all out, unpackage it, I'll get rid of all the junk, and then I'll come back up and we'll go from there, so stick around. All right, so I've got all the pieces laid out. The main box there is obviously, that's the screen. You have the aluminum frame. You have the uh, exterior frame. This is the trim that gives it that black finish, which looks very cool. You have the uh, center brace that uh, gives you the brace in the middle of the frame. And then of course, the bag of goodies, which is gonna have all the springs, uh, screws, um, L brackets, everything that you need to join the pieces together and actually build the screen. And that's exactly what we're gonna start doing right now. Okay, so I have laid out the frame um, to start the construction. You can see here, you basically lay it out to just sort of give you, you know, to, fr to frame it up and get it ready to go. So the first step, when actually doing or putting it together is you're going to be inputting these brackets here. So I'll start with just showing you how that goes and then we'll go from there. All right, so these are the brackets that, uh, that you put in to the slots here to put this thing together. So we'll do that first. Okay, so the A piece goes here underneath, or, or I guess in the slot, and that slides in and joins these two pieces together, and we'll make sure that it's centered fairly evenly, and in this case it is, and then the B goes over the top to create the connection, and then you have your four screws that are going to join these two pieces together and keep them solid. And be carefully use your screwdriver. And now, of course, once you finish that, you're going to repeat the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to go do that right now and be right back. Okay, <clears throat> this is now where we do the corner brackets. Uh, with very similar to the middle pieces, C goes, uh, or the, the smaller screws go at the bottom, the larger at the top. So we're going to take basically this here, we're going to slide it in, and then we're going to do the same there. And we're going to go and connect the same way here. And you want to be careful to make sure that you are uh, lining these up properly because the reason being is uh, they have to be obviously the right angle um, for that to work properly. So I am struggling a little bit here, but there we go. Making sure to align that properly. Make sure that the edge is flush. Everything fits properly and accordingly. And then this just slides in like so. Take your screws. Same idea as the centerpiece, carefully, again, making sure everything 
is still aligned properly because fit is super important with these things. So I will sometimes take an extra few minutes just to make sure that I've got this bang on and that it is as perfectly close to flush as possible. All right. Now, we've got a little bit of movement there, so I'm going to loosen this one back up. A fraction of a, of a bit can make all the difference. So you want to make sure I'm going to actually loosen both of these up because, again, you want to make sure you've got it as close to bang on as you can, right? So let's line that up. That's pretty close to perfect. Just a little bit less so we don't cause the other one to slip. There we go. And now we got a nice flush corner. Just what we want. So again, of course, you're going to do the same thing on all four corners. And what you will then have is your completed uh, constructed frame. So the next step is to take the fabric out of the uh, box, the screen I should say, the screen material, and start to unroll it. What you can see here is that I've still kept the soft um, foam down just for a little bit more protection, but it also comes pretty well protected inside of this extra wrap as well, which is very nice. Um, don't forget to put on your gloves because that's very important to keep fingerprints and etc. down to as little as possible and make sure that the screen front material is laying underneath or down. This is the back, that's what you want to be showing. So basically you just essentially roll it all the way out and uh, once you've done that we move to the next step. So again uh, no need for you to see all the rolling so I'll get to the next step once I've got this unrolled and ready to go. All right so the next step is to take the rods which are meant to be the tension on the screen and we're going to insert them into the screen as the instructions show and in this case I believe it shows just want to be clear uh, goes underneath on the first one so underneath so we basically take the rod I'm really running dangerously low out of space here so, the rod goes underneath on the first one, and then it goes through here, it's a little hard with your gloves because I've got a little bit of glue from taking the tape off, and of course now that's stuck. So let's go through. And you're just going to continue this all the way through for obviously the edges and for um, the sides now or the uh, the bottom and the top. They are two bars for each side because it's a little longer and um, you're going to basically do the same thing across that as well. So slide them all the way through, get that part done. Once you have the tension rods in, we'll go to the next step. All right, so once you have all the poles, the tension rods, that is, into the fabric, this is now when we're going to take the frame and we're going to lower that over top of the material. And you'll notice there are little markers, hard to see there, on the material. And what those do is uh, help you align the rods and the material to the actual frame. And that is going to be the next step. All right, so the next stage, once you've got the frame laid out over the uh, material, is installing this center bar, which basically gives support um, for the middle of the screen. So in order to do that, you start with one edge into the screen, and then you slide this one over to the center piece so that they're done 
uh, a line in the center. So I'll get that done. Okay, so now this is where we start with the springs and probably the most difficult for me part of the uh, installation because of my space limitation here. Uh, I really have almost no space to work with. And to be quite honest with you, I'm not really quite sure how I'm gonna do it, but I will manage and uh, get it right. So I'll just pop over here. You'll notice the springs here. Of course, it's almost impossible to open the bag with the gloves on, so I will do that first. And uh, when you look at the instructions, it does uh, state to be pretty careful with the, you know, the way that you do the, the springs. As a matter of fact, it actually shows you uh, where you should start in position. So you start basically center side and then center side and then center top, center bottom, and then you work your way around uh, again using the, the, the um, springs. So I'm going to get at that right now. Um, I can start with the, the center side here because I've got the space set up for that. And I'll see if I can actually set this up so you guys can see. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to take one of these springs, and they are particular about how they go on. So center. So we will give this a hook. Make sure we got that right. I mean the actual hooking uh, of the screw is quite simple, or of the spring is quite simple. Um, you just want to make sure that you've got it proper. Again, center, 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 and then follow the numbers uh, as they have them set up. So for me, I mean, I'm going to have to keep moving this back and forth. So it's not going to be a whole lot of fun to watch. So I will pause the video and I'll be back once I have all the springs done. So now that I've got all of the springs onto the screen, it's very taut looking. It looks very nice. Uh, there's no wrinkles, absolutely nothing. It's fantastic. So the next step is now the side rails or the caps, I guess, if you can say, um, that give it that finished screen uh, look similar to, you know, a flat screen uh, monitor. So these go together in the same fashion uh, as the um, frame goes together. It uses the joints that go in between the two pieces for screws. And then the same thing for the corners. There's just a couple of those there. So I'm going to get that together and that'll be the next thing. And again, it's not really uh, that difficult in a sense of, um, of doing these. So, you know, I don't really need to show it in a sense other than to say, um, make sure that you line them up, get them all uh, lined up uh, correctly. And you will see actually, you will see that uh, there are corners that uh, butt up to get that angle. So make sure that you have that lined up accordingly as well. Um, and that'll just make that whole installation uh, go smoother. I was looking cause I had thought somewhere there was a, an elite screen marketing piece that goes on this, the, uh, on that trim, but I didn't see one on any of these pieces. So maybe that'll be one of those surprises when I get it up on the wall and find out that uh, I missed the fact that it had that but uh, anyways, we'll deal with that when that time comes. All right, so once you get the frame finished, um, I was able, by the way, to find the Elite Screen marker. Uh, it's very subtle, which is probably a good thing, um, which is why I missed it initially. Um, but once you get that frame on, the next step is to use the springs that were similar to the springs used to do the uh, tautness of the actual screen material. And you're going to use those to sort of lock down 
that frame. So I'm going to do that next. And then believe it or not, that's the finished building of the actual screen itself. So we're almost there, guys. I also forgot to mention there are these end caps that come with, uh, with the screen and they basically go on the corners just to tidy that end up. It's a little bit sharp, so it's probably a good idea to have those. Pretty straightforward though, they just glue on. It looks like you peel the paper off and stick them on and that'll uh, just keep it a little bit less, uh, a little less sharp anyway. So I'll do that as well. All right, end caps are on. Center springs are done to hold the um, trim together on the sides. So essentially, this beauty is done. So now the next steps for me is to take my old screen. And by the way, I wanted to give you guys one last look here. Please forgive the mess of my original screen. Just to give you an idea. Just to give you an idea of the size that it was and what the new screen is going to look like different wise. So you can see here in the actual speakers that only about a quarter of the woofer is covered up. So it'll be very interesting to see when the new screen is up, how much more of that's going to be covered. I normally have some Ikea type stands at the bottom that hold my DVDs and stuff or Blu-rays. So uh, we're going to see how that all fits. But very curious and very interesting. Next step coming right up. All right, so I'm down in my home theater, guys. We're just about to start the audio portion or the test of my do-it-yourself screen that I built myself uh, using Carl's Place material. For the longest time, it served uh, everything that I needed to do. It was a great screen. Uh, the one thing, though, that I wanted was a bigger screen. And I'm just going to give you a quick shot of my home theater room with the lights on so that you can actually see those wall mounted speakers. So right now the screen just barely covers the woofer portion, which was not really enough to affect it. And if I was gonna go bigger, I was going to have those speakers being covered. So that was my dilemma as to whether or not I wanted to do that. So the consideration became, how can I get the bigger screen without covering the speakers uh, or covering the speakers and not losing the audio. Uh, that's when I reached out to Elite Screens and we had a discussion on the Aeon Sinewhite A8K series acoustically transparent screen and things really started to just make sense and that was when uh, I decided to go forward with that screen. So the first thing that I wanted to do was just give you an idea of the audio using my existing screen, setting my Marantz receiver to 42, and taking a look at what we get for um, a, an audio recording level um, with my current setup. So I'm going to just go in right now, and I'm going to hit record on my screen capture, and we're going to go here on my decibel level reader, and let's now start the video, or the audio, that is. So right now we're hovering around 75, 76, except for obviously when I speak. Again, just for evidence. So there you go. It was sitting in around 78 to 80 thereabouts decibels at that 42 um, level for the audio out on the receiver. So now what I'm going to do is 
Um, once I have the new screen built and uh, put up on the wall, I will then do the same reading of the same royalty video. Again, uh, this is a, a no copyrights music uh, piece. And uh, we will see the difference with um, when I compare it to the uh, Sine White 8, A8K series screen. All right, guys, I'm back. And as you can see, I've got the screen installed. Now, I wanted to give it a couple of days just to get a better feel for how it looks, really uh, what it does, just a little bit of time to let it set in. And I have to tell you, the size, first of all, is phenomenal. It's unbelievable. 150 inches uh, is incredible. Just to touch on the installation process, um, very straightforward, two screws per bracket. The bracket obviously goes up on the wall. Uh, what I, one of the things that I was really impressed with this, um, with this screen is how incredibly uh, light it is for what it represents. And uh, with one of my kids, I was able to uh, pop the screen up and hang it up very quickly, very simply. So a very easy process. So really uh, kudos for a very nice simplified anch anchoring system for, for the screen itself. So that's just the hookup. I have to say, uh, very impressed with that. As far as the screen goes, guys, two days into this thing, wow. I am literally amazed. Um, anybody who knows the Jamgo N1 laser projector, which I'm using in my home theater room, knows that there is some laser speckle. Um, I had a little bit on my old screen. It wasn't that much, but it was certainly there. Uh, this screen has completely, literally 100% taken away all laser speckle. I cannot see any speckle on any bright white scenes, hockey games, green images, anything that gave me that speckle before, it's completely gone in this screen. So I have to say, number one, incredible screen for reducing laser speckle. I'm sure that if we compare that with other laser projectors on the market, this screen is gonna actually do an incredibly good job on reducing that speckle. Obviously, I have lights on in here so that you're not seeing the full image on the screen. I'm using one of my videos to avoid any copyright issues. But the point there is, I will, uh, in some time after my brief discussion here, uh, go back to the actual dark mode where, first of all, we'll compare the audio quality uh, of that acoustically transparent screen. So I've already shot the uh, old video uh, or I should say the old screen, video of the old screen and its audio, and then we'll compare it to the new screen. Um, but I have been kind of uh, just playing it around a little bit. And I have to say, again, very impressed with the audio or the acoustic transparency of this screen. It truly is uh, spectacular. I think that uh, Elite Screens have done an incredibly good job. The idea of putting together this monster screen was, uh, was I'm not going to lie, a bit of a concern. And when I actually got into it and started putting it together, as you can kind of see in my video earlier, uh, it was a step-by-step -step process. It really wasn't bad. The biggest concern that I had was, am I just going to have enough room in this home theater room to put this thing together? Uh, the couch that I have is so big that it's actually almost impossible to get it out of the uh, home theater room, I, I have to move a bunch of uh, shoe racks and stuff outside and able to do that. So I didn't really want to do that. So the process itself of building the screen was incredibly pleasant and really uh, a great experience. One that uh, I wasn't quite sure how it was going to work out, but at the end it worked out great. So the building of it was great. The hanging of the brackets and, and actually putting the screen up also a great experience, a very simple experience. Again, as simple enough that I could use um, uh, the help of one of my kids and we were able to pop that thing up and it's hanging, as you can see, brilliantly. Uh, the first thing that took me by surprise, besides the speckle, um, the laser speckle, is the, the, the clarity of this screen. You know, I was using an old screen material made by Carl's Place. Uh, it was a very sharp image and I wasn't so sure as to how this image would, uh, would look in, with this particular screen material. And again, uh, I, I gotta say, you know, this is probably the best 
image quality that I've ever seen on any projector combination uh, projector screen uh, ever. And uh, it's all to do with this screen. The screen is really incredible. Um, so just the overall sharpness and image is incredible. The last thing I will say about the image of this screen is how much it pops. I was watching a, a, a Canucks game uh, the other night, which by the way, they're playing again tonight and I can't wait to watch that as well. Um, and uh, I was blown away by the fact that the blues of the Canucks uniform, they got blue, green and white colors, looked incredible. Even the Pittsburgh yellow and black was fantastic. Uh, the ice was again, speckle-free, completely speckle-free. So now I'm watching a, a hockey game on a 150 inch screen with no speckle. And again, there's only one thing to thank for that. It's the screen itself, because I have been watching this projector on my old screen, saw the speckle again, not incredibly uh, big, but it was there. This has literally taken it away 100%. So again, you've been seeing it now with the lights on. I think it's only fair to really allow this thing to shine. And we're gonna do two things. We're gonna go over a couple of videos just to give you an idea of how incredible this thing looks. And then we'll also do that acoustic sound transparency comparison so that we can look at the two and show what it's really, uh, how well this acoustic transparency actually really works. Uh, so let's get right at it. All right, you guys, the first thing you're gonna notice is probably a little bit of, a, of an increase in the picture quality here on the screen. Uh, again, looking fantastic. Um, and this is actually with just the normal, uh, I guess, in-house lights, if you will, on. So what I'm going to do now is actually turn those off. So let's go to there. And let's see about getting these lights off. And now you're really going to see this uh, screen shine. Now keep in mind, again, this is a laser projector. So the camera image, as good as I've tried to get it dialed in, will still have a bit of a red or tink, pink tinge to it, but it is only on the camera. You don't actually see it here in the home theater. But I think you agree, the size of the screen, in fact, I can't even uh, go any bigger with my zoom out. It's, it's all screen in this case. Um, looks spectacular. So the image itself really, truly is amazing, as I said. Um, when you look at this image, this is a 4K image that I filmed with this particular camera. And when you look at this screen, I, I can't say enough how truly amazed I am with the picture, right? You would think that a screen can only do so much for an image, but in this case, it's actually incredible just how, how well it shows with this projector, how incredibly good it looks. So I'm completely amazed and blown away by the image quality. I am so happy that I was able to work with um, Elite Screens as a collaborative um, uh, effort to create this video uh, and to give you guys uh, an idea of how this works, especially all you Jamgo N1 owners out there, guys, you cannot beat this. I mean, if you're looking for the ultimate screen to what I, you know, to make the ultimate projector, looked so incredible. This is the thing. This is what you need. It's incredible. So let's get into the idea of audio. I'm going to pause the video for a second, set up that same audio piece that we were listening again at the same 42 decibel level. And let's see where we are with uh, the audio quality and how well this acoustically, uh, acoustic transparent screen works of this, uh, of this Aeon um, 8K screen. So let's get right at that. All right, guys, I've got it back up and running. I am set up with the same audio that I used with my old screen. And I'm now going to start playing this video uh, through the uh, acoustic transparent screen of the, uh, of the Elite Aeon screen. So let's do that right now. And of course, I'll go to 42 as well. I have to say right now, the readings are almost identical. In 
fact, I would go as far as saying they might actually be louder. I would say that uh, on average, it's definitely louder. And there you have it, folks. Even the acoustic transparency of this screen is truly incredible. The image, as you can see, is unbelievable. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to turn down the audio. And the reason I'm doing that, just again, to not get any conflict with copywriting, I'm going to show one more video. No, I'm going to show this Samsung because the other difference that I'm really noticing on this screen is its ability to do contrast, to do black. And I, I think what you're going to see here in this video, I'm going to let it run for just a second. Oh, I'm going to have to pause it and go back to the beginning where the horse is here. Check this out. I hope it tran I, I hope you see it on the screen. I mean, the Jam Go has always been amazing for contrast, but this screen, I gotta say, I mean, this is a an OLED screen. I, there is there the blacks are incredible, rich and colorful um, reds, right? I mean, that's unbelievable. Again, I know it's not showing specific on this on the the video image, but this this thing's image this is incredible. Okay, I'm gonna stop this video again. So guys, there you have it. I am gonna say uh, again, incredibly amazed at this screen, um, incredibly blown away by just how well it works. Uh, the image quality that it produces is uh, tr truly unbelievable. Um, I, I think that um, they're they're really again, and you have to remember, I have had. Uh, multiple screens uh, over the years with my home theaters, and uh, and this is uh, without question uh, probably well not probably this is without question uh, the absolute best screen that I've ever had. So I have to I, I just want to thank Elite Screens for letting me be a part of this uh, this experiment, if you will, with this Aeon Sin White A eight uh, K series screen. This thing is absolutely unbelievable. I am sold. And remember, even though this is a collaborative video, all of the feedback and input is based on what I truly feel. This is no marketing. This is a home theater enthusiast who loves his home theater, blown away by this screen. This is an absolute no-brainer that you cannot go wrong with this. It is the best uh, screen that I've ever used without question. And anybody who has the room for a 150 inch screen, man, take a look at this thing because it will knock your socks off. Um, it's really all I have to say. Again, I just want to thank Elite Screens for letting me be a part of this, for sending me this Aeon Sin White 8K uh, series acoustic transparent screen, and uh, and for letting me be a part of this again. And for all of you for watching my videos, again, I say it every single video. It knocks me out that you guys spend the time to watch my videos. I thank you for that. I hope you've learned some really important uh, uh, information on this screen. Do not hesitate to buy it. I will put a link uh, in the description for the screen itself. And uh, thank you for your time and for uh, subscribing to my channel. Any questions, please add them in the comments. Click the like and uh, also the, uh, the bell icon. And again, thank you so much, and thanks to Elite Screens. You guys, it's been a pleasure. As always, uh, take care, enjoy your home theater, and get yourself one of these screens.